Let's apply the topic of complex numbers to electricity. So first, pause the video, read the problem carefully. And now that you're back, we have to find the impedance for a series circuit for the one shown above. Okay, and then there, we're also told that the impedance for the circuit is the sum of the impedances for the individual components. All right, so here's a better view of all that information. Now just match everything up as you, as you see it. So the inductor over here is, is L and you're just matching up the symbols. Uh, this symbol here is the resistor and we have a capacitor. All right, so that's the component in the symbol. Uh, now the resistance or the reactance is denoted by the numbers next to each component. So for the resistor, R is five ohms. The reactance of the inductor is three ohms. And for the capacitor, the reactance is four ohms. Therefore, the impedance, just follow the formula. The impedance is five ohms. Uh, the impedance for the inductor, well, if this was L, we just have to put three I ohms. And the impedance for the capacitor is negative four I ohms. All right, so based on what we were told before, Z, which is the variable used for impedance, is the sum of all the other impedances. All right, so just match them up now from the information we had before. Five plus three I plus negative four I. We can combine those two and we get five plus negative one I. So therefore the impedance for the series circuit is five minus I ohms. Two complex numbers of the form A plus BI and A minus BI are called complex conjugates. When we get to graphing, this will make a little more sense. Uh, but if one of the complex conjugates is A plus BI, which would put the point right here, A minus BI would be down here. There's a list of complex conjugates. Let's look at one specific case. So maybe this one, and we're going to multiply two complex conjugates together. And this is very similar to a difference of squares pattern. So go ahead and distribute. So eight times eight is 64. Eight times negative three I gives us 24 I. Move inside, distribute the three I. Three I times eight is positive 24 I minus nine I squared. You can see that negative 24i, positive 24i, they cancel out, they're zero. So I can bring down the 64. And the negative 9i squared is negative 9, and i squared we know from before is negative 1. Negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9. And our grand total, this simplifies to 73. Okay, and you'll notice that this will happen anytime you multiply two complex conjugates, you will end up with a real number. Question to think about, is that number always, sometimes or never going to be positive?
All right, well, we know it's sometimes, but is it always? Okay, next. You use complex conjugates to uh, change a quotient, a complex quotient, to standard form, which you recall is A plus BI. And in order to do that, we have to look at the complex number in the denominator and multiply by the complex conjugate. So 8 plus 3i, the complex conjugate, is 8 minus 3i. But you have to do that also in the numerator, which makes that entire fraction equal to 1. So essentially, we're multiplying by a 1 in disguise. All right, well, we determined earlier that the denominator here is 73. And now for the numerator, we just have to distribute. So 5 times 8 is 40 minus 15i. And last, because we're dividing by a monomial of 73, we could just write this as 40 divided by 73 minus 15 over 73i. And that's our final answer. Move on to another example. So we have 2 plus i in the numerator being divided by negative 4 plus 3i. All right, the complex conjugate of negative 4 plus 3i is negative 4 minus 3i. And when you do these problems, I would recommend take the time and multiply the numerator somewhere else and then multiply the denominator somewhere else. So if you look here, I'm going to simplify the numerator first. I'm going to multiply the binomial, distribute, simplify it, and then do the same for the denominator. Here's what I have for the numerator, and we can go ahead and write that in the numerator. Negative 5 minus 10i. And now do the same for the denominator. Because these are complex conjugates, we expect our answer of this part to have no imaginary part. So go ahead and distribute, simplify. Okay, we get 25. And lastly, we'll write this as a complex number in standard form. So negative 5 25ths minus 10i over 25, and we could simplify this, so it's negative 1 -fifth minus 2i fifths. And there's our answer. The absolute value of a complex number, z equals a plus bi denoted by absolute value of z. When you ever you're finding the absolute value of a complex number, it's giving you the distance so absolute value of z will give you the distance from the origin to the point. All right, an example, we're going to plot the complex number negative 3 plus 4i in the complex plane because we can't use a real plane and then we will cal calculate its distance from the origin. All right, so the real plane is the A term, and the imaginary is the B I term. All right, so negative 3 means we're going to have to go to the left from the origin. Right. Try to be as even as you can here. So this is negative 1, this is negative 2, that's negative 3. And in the imaginary axis, we have to go to 4i.
So here we would have i, 2i, 3i, 4i. And now just plot the point. Go three units to the left, and then four units up. And there's the point. And now we're going to calculate its distance from the origin. And the formula should remind you of working with the Pythagorean theorem. So if you look at the formula, the formula says that we take the square root of the a term squared plus the b term squared. Well, from our number, a is negative 3, and the b term is the coefficient of the imaginary part. It's 4. So we're going to take the square root of negative 3 squared plus square root of 4 squared. That gives us the square root of 9 plus 16, which is 25. And when we square root that, we get 5. And it makes sense, because if you remember your Pythagorean triplets, if this is 3, and this is 4, this would be 5.